Hello and welcome to the first of the higher level bonding films. This one deals with polarity and it kind of picks up where the standard level films left off in that um, you need to understand something about um, the shapes of molecules if you're going to decide whether they're polar or not. Um, but actually in this film we're going to uh, explain really what polarity is rather than predicting whether molecules or examples of molecules are actually going to be polar. So hopefully by the end of this film um, you'll know that bonds can become polar on an account of an electronegativity difference between two atoms and that these polar bonds can sometimes lead to molecular polarity but that there are also molecules that are not polar in spite of the fact that they do have polar bonds and these ideas can be linked to the symmetry of the molecules. Right. Let's start off by looking at what we mean by bond polarity. Okay? Now, if two atoms are bonded together, they're not going to have, if they're different atoms, they're not going to have the same electronegativity. In other words, they're not going to attract the electrons in the bond to the same degree. And as we'll discover soon in the periodicity topic, um, fluorine is the most electronegative element in the periodic table. So if I take an example that we've looked at quite a lot now, boron trifluoride, I can say that the fluorine atoms, which are much better at attracting electrons than the boron, will pull the electrons in the bonds towards themselves and they'll pull them away from the boron. Now what this means is there'll be an uneven distribution of charge. Right? The electrons won't be exactly halfway between these two atoms, and so the boron atom will take on a slight positive charge. This lowercase Greek d, delta, means a very small amount of positive charge. This doesn't become a positive ion, it just becomes slightly positively charged because it's lost control of some of its electrons. Similarly, the fluorine, which has got more electrons than it would normally have, or a greater share of electrons than it would normally have, becomes slightly negative. So this bond is polar. There's an uneven distribution of charge in it, and it's got a negative end and a positive end. Okay? So each one of these bonds in boron trifluoride would be polar, and each one of them would have a slightly negative end at the fluorine and a slightly positive end at the boron. We can see it here drawn in a slightly different way. We've got these lowercase Greek deltas, meaning a little bit of a little bit of positive charge at the hydrogen and a little bit of negative charge at the fluorine and this thing here is kind of showing you how the electron cloud has been distorted by the fluorine okay it's pulled the electrons over towards itself making itself more negative sucking them away from the hydrogen making the hydrogen slightly positive so any bond where the electrons aren't in the middle where they're being unevenly shared between the two atoms will be a polar bond The thing is, just because you have polar bonds in a molecule, it doesn't necessarily mean that the molecule will be polar itself. So it can have polar bonds without being polar. Now, we're going to start off by looking at methane here. Okay? What this says here is that the dipole moment, or how polar this molecule is, is zero. It doesn't have a dipole moment. It's not polar. There is a slight electronegativity difference between the carbons and the hydrogens here but it's not significant and as we'll see in a minute it's cancelling out anyway. Now if I swapped one of those hydrogens for a chlorine, chlorine's quite an electronegative element, it pulls electrons towards itself quite a lot. Okay, So it will make this end of the molecule slightly positive compared to itself which will be slightly negative. So overall this molecule starts to have a negative end and a positive end and it has a overall dipole which is measured here in Dubai but we don't need to worry about the units okay it's measured as 1.92 Dubai okay now if I swap another hydrogen for another chlorine what I'll find now is that both these chlorines are slightly negative but there's still kind of a negative end to the molecule it just happens to be over here as shown by this arrow okay there's a negative end and there's a positive end if I had a third chlorine atom, right, then all these chlorines will become 
negative because they're better at attracting electrons than carbon and hydrogen and the hydrogen will be slightly positive and we can measure the dipole moment there as well. These figures are not important, okay? It's just showing that there is an overall dipole or in other words overall the molecule is polar, right? And in this case it's over towards this end of the molecule, this end of the molecule being the chlorine end and that end being the hydrogen end. Now if I take the fourth hydrogen and swap it for a chlorine, Although every one of the chlorines is slightly negative, although all of them are better at attracting electrons than the carbon, which is slightly positive, each one of these polar bonds is now cancelling the other ones out. Okay? Or I should say they all cancel one another out because of the symmetry of the tetrahedral arrangement. Okay? So there's no net dipole moment. So even though every single one of these bonds is polar like it was before, this molecule has gone back to being non-polar because all the bonds cancel one another out. This molecule would have been polar if I put some other atom here. It would have had a slightly positive end and a slightly negative end. But because all the atoms are the same around the outside and because all the bonds are just as polar as one another, this molecule overall has no net dipole moment. It's not polar. Let's have a look at a few other shapes that we've looked at recently and decide whether polar bonds will make a polar molecule. Now, if we've got a linear molecule with two different atoms, well, there is only one bond. So if that pol if bond is polar, then the molecule must be polar. If I've got a trigonal planar arrangement, remember this is trigonal planar with a 120 degree bond angle. Even if I've got very electronegative atoms out here, because these bonds these polar bonds are cancelling one another out so because this geometry is very symmetrical the molecule ends up being non-polar same thing here with tetrachloromethane that we've just looked at the bonds cancel one another out just one chlorine you end up with a bond that is just as polar as these bonds but the molecule is polar instead of being non-polar because now it's not symmetrical and here we've got this trigonal pyramid shape remember where we're looking a bit like a tetrahedron except that we've got a lone pair there so this bond angle is a bit smaller than a tetrahedral bond angle because there is no atom here to cancel out or no bond up here to cancel out these bonds then overall this molecule will be polar this molecule is not symmetrical in the same way that a tetrahedron is even though I suppose if you looked at it directly from above it would look like a triangle but because when we come down and we see it in three dimensions, it lacks the same symmetry, it becomes polar. So in other words, molecules that are entirely symmetrical will not be polar, even if their bonds are. Whereas molecules that are unsymmetrical will always be polar. Okay? Anyway, that was. Uh, we're going to now start looking in the next film about um, what effect the polarity of molecules will have on the forces between them but hopefully by understanding what's going on in this film you can decide whether a molecule is polar and why it will be polar so relate its polarity to electronegativity differences and decide whether a molecule with polar bonds will be polar or nonpolar overall quite difficult this stuff especially the first time you hear it so please feel free to ask questions and to comment either by posting on YouTube or by coming to see me.